Welcome back. As promised, we're going to pick up this broadcast from Renewing Your Mind, where we left off. And to ask that question is to answer it. The answer is absolutely no. There is no unrighteousness in God. But let me just play with this, tweak this a little bit, and ask the question somewhat differently. Is there non-righteousness in God? The answer to that question is yes. There is non-righteousness, or more specifically, non-justice in God. Now notice I didn't say unrighteousness or injustice. I said non-righteousness or non-justice. Now I'm not just playing games here with this, but I, I want to take some time to explain what I'm talking about here. I'm going to my blackboard and I'm going to ask my students out there who are listening on the radio to use their visual imagination now and try to imagine this handsome man <laughs> going <laughs> the people here are laughing when I so I'm going to the blackboard which is really a green board and I have my piece of chalk and I'm going to draw a circle as if I were going to make a happy face and I'm going to put this word in that circle justice or if you want I'll put in parentheses inside the circle righteousness now this circle in which I put the word justice or righteousness represents a concept the concept of justness or righteousness if you will now if we have a category called justice or righteousness then anything that is not a part of this circle anything that falls outside of this circle would be what we call non-justice or non-righteousness. I mean, that's simple, isn't it? We have these two categories, justice and non-justice, or righteousness and non-righteousness. Those are mutually exclusive categories. Those circles cannot overlap or intersect because non-justice refers to everything outside of the circle or the category of justice. You with me so far? Okay. Now I'm going to put a second circle on my board, only this time I'm going to put that circle on the outside of the perimeter of the first circle, so that the first circle is now inside the second circle. Okay? Now everything in the second circle, the outer circle, is still non-justice or non-righteousness. Now I'm going to do just a little bit more artwork, and this is all you'll have to do now with your imagination, is that I'm going to draw a vertical line at the top of the two circles that splits in half the outer circle. Just a short little line that divides the top half of the outer circle. I hope that's descriptive enough for you to visualize it. And then at the bottom, I'm going to draw another vertical line like that. So that now my outer circle has been divided into two half circles. Looks like a crescent moon. Now I've done that for this reason. Even though this outer circle represents the category of non-justice, there are different kinds of non-justice, two kinds of non-justice that are most important for our consideration. In the crescent to the right, that is one half of that outer circle, I'm going to write the word injustice. In the other crescent on the left, I'm going to write mercy or grace. Now, if you can visualize this little diagram that I've made for you, let's talk about it for a minute. The whole point of this picture is to explain this simple idea, that there are different kinds of non-justice and different kinds of non-righteousness. Injustice or unrighteousness, those are categories of evil, and they are absolutely antithetical to righteousness or justice. 
if God ever did anything that was unjust or unrighteous or unjust, okay, if he committed an injustice against anyone, he would no longer be a righteous God. He would no longer be good, would he? Now, the other side of my second circle has the category of mercy or grace. Is there anything wrong with a holy, righteous God being gracious or being merciful? That would not be evil for a just and righteous being to grant mercy or grace because grace and mercy are good things. They're not bad things, whereas unrighteousness is bad. Now, we're going to erase that picture. I'm going to make another picture on the board, and this is going to be real simple. I'm going to write a bunch of stick figures on my blackboard and display my artistic skill, or lack of it, where we have a group of, say, seven or eight little stick men on the board, and these, these figures represent a group of people. Now, when we talk about the doctrine of election, we understand that some people receive the grace of election and some do not. So I'm going to just take my piece of chalk and draw a circle around four of these people in the group. And then I'm going to put a circle around the rest. Now, in the first circle are the folks who receive grace. The other group receive from God's hand justice. That is, the elect receive the grace of God, the non-elect receive the justice of God. Am I going too fast? The elect receive grace or mercy, the non-elect receive justice. Now so far, has anybody in my picture been a victim of God's injustice or unrighteousness? Of course not. And this is what Paul is getting at here when he asks the question, is there unrighteousness of God? The question is asked because God's grace is not given equally to everybody. And since God gives a gracious gift to Jacob that he doesn't give to Esau, this seems like it's not fair because the protest goes like that. If I give grace to one person, then I must give grace to everybody else, right? Isn't that the way we think? That's the American way. That's the democratic way. But let's take an analogy drawn from prisoners who have been convicted of murder in the first degree. And the governor of the state decides to execute executive clemency and to pardon one of those criminals. Now that criminal does not deserve to be pardoned. He deserves to be executed. He has escaped justice and he's received mercy. Now suppose the governor does not choose to pardon the other convicted murderers and they are punished. Have they been unjustly punished? Of course not. They received justice. The other person received grace. Now I ask you this. Is it necessary if the governor pardons one that he must therefore pardon all? Well, I would ask you, by what law is it so? that if one receives mercy, everybody has to receive mercy. That would be true only if justice requires it. But we're not talking about justice here. We're talking about non-justice. We're talking about mercy. We're talking about grace. And this is what Paul is reminding the readers of Romans very emphatically, that God had already said this to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion upon whom I will have compassion. This is one of the most crucial concepts to understand about biblical Christianity, and it's one few of us really ever grasp. Because as I've said before, I've never met a Christian who said to me they did not believe in the sovereignty of God. Okay, and we're going to stop right there. Um, again, for the sake of time of this video, thanks for watching.